Jacques, uh, interesting selection, just Jaden's uh, selection over, over Faf. Um, yeah, I think, yes, we all know what Faf brings, uh, you know, lots of experience um, and he's a world-class co- uh, scrum off. Uh, but I, I also think we, we all saw uh, Jaden's performance last week, and, I, I, and we really, as a as coaching group and selectors, thought that he that he performed well. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think if you look at our squad, the 42 that's here, there's there's a lot of competition. Uh, there's a lot of informed players. There's a lot of players that's knocking hard on the door. And I think uh, for the players who's probably you would call the established players that have been here before or won a World Cup and British and Irish Lions series, I think for them it's key to focus on on their performance week in week out. You know, and and it, and for the other guys, uh, um, um, if they really if they perform well and they knock on the door, uh, that's un- that, that's the way they'll get selected. You know, mm-hmm. so the challenge will be, and I think. Uh, Jaden will know that Faf will come hard for him, you know, and uh, uh, to get his uh, spot back uh, because he's a fighter. And his challenge is now to uh, to keep on uh, putting in consistent performances like he did um, on the weekend. What is it about uh, Jaden, the um, technically that you like, the, um, the strengths of his game that, that you think that, that appealed to you? No, I thought I thought he had a well balanced game. I thought he had a good kicking game. I thought his passing accuracy was really good. Uh, I thought he got nice rhythm on our on our attack. Um, and yeah, I thought his defence was strong. You know, uh, hopefully all aspects of his game was really good. So how important is that accuracy going to be? Obviously, that's a big part of your game plan. The, the, the high ball and so on, the kicking uh, game. Is that important? Just in, in terms of the accuracy, obviously it wasn't uh, the case in the previous two games. Um, I thought the accuracy was in the first game wasn't good, and especially in the first half, and we had to we mo- had to move away from our kicking game and try and apply pressure on a different in a different uh, uh, method um, uh, to get the result. And I thought um, I thought our kicking game wasn't too bad last weekend. Uh, yeah, so I don't think it was too bad last weekend. Um, uh, when we kick, I, I thought receiving we went great. But when we kick, I thought we we got nice opportunity. We got a couple of. Uh, uh, if, I, if I just uh, think of um, uh, where the yellow card came from, we we got uh, got tackled a meter short from the try line. That came from a contestable kick that we regathered, and then we could launch with that. Jock, in terms of obviously there's the rugby championship around the corner, and after this it's the All Blacks. Do you feel any need, and um, maybe was it the case in the first two tests also to hide something um, from from the All Blacks, kind of balance the need to win, but also not kind of you know show your hand um, bef- before you you go into the rugby championship? Yeah, I think uh, when we started the year, we obviously have got um, we, we, after our review of 2021, we obviously got certain internal things that we would like to uh, to achieve, you know. And uh, in all a- aspects of our game, and and we're busy with that process. Uh, we we remind ourselves weekly of that process, um, and some of the things are accelerating nicely, and some of it is isn't going uh, is not accelerating as uh, as quickly as we thought it would. So yeah, we're con- continuously building on that. Uh, Oxford selection over, over, over I mean Trevor, Trevor and, Ox, and and yeah, Trevor started at last week. You said this week. Yeah. The Cape Town surface is also not great for scrumming, you know, the pitch cuts up. Uh, just give us your thoughts on, on, on that selection. Please. Yeah, I think there, if, if you look at the front rows that we have, I mean, I think we're fortunate there. You know, last week Thomas has started at loose head, but he played the majority of his rugby at tight head, you know. And, and the same with, uh, with, with someone like Trevor, you know. It's, uh, we, we are fortunate that we can have that, a player of that quality that can can produce at loose head and tight head. Uh, and, and, and listen, it's a coin toss between the two. Uh, you know, they were, I thought Ox really played well in the, uh, in the, he played well in the first test and I thought uh, Trevor was, was equally as good in, in, the, in the second test. And uh, uh, yeah, we just decided uh, to go with the front row that we used before uh, last year, uh, where Trevor uh, uh, is on the loose set with Bongi and then Franz Malarbe on the tight head. And we got some good results with that. So um, yeah, that's why we went that route. <coughs> Jacques, in terms of game plan, uh, you guys were played a little bit more expansively last week. Um, does it revert back to plan A or um, this weekend? Or? 
Yeah, uh, uh, Brendan, I think the, the thing is, uh, and I know it's a cliche answer, but you are trying to apply pressure with different uh, methods, you know. So, uh, like in the first game, we obviously were, were chasing the scoreboard uh, and, and they had scoreboard pressure on us and our kicking game didn't work in the first half because of our inaccuracy. Um, um, and, and then we had to uh, convert to a more ball-in-hand approach to try and apply pressure on them. And I thought we did that in the second half of the first test. Last week, I, we, I, I really thought um, there were some instances where we, we, we attacked well uh, and we kept the ball in hand. Uh, I think that's probably one of the big work-ons for us from, uh, and take our messages from last week is the lost opportunities. I mentioned it after the game. I think when we did the review yesterday, there was about four instances where we lost the ball due, due to our inaccuracy between the five meter and the goal line of Wales, you know, and, and that, 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 that is... Um, yeah, that is something that we have to improve on. And so I really thought we had opportunities, but we just didn't take them uh, 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 in the last test. So uh, we will, obviously, we, we've got a, a, a um, how can I say, a foundation of a, of, a, of a game plan that we play, and we will probably start out that way, and then we'll have to see. Uh, sometimes the opposition uh, neutralizes uh, one way of applying pressure, and then we must look at another way to apply pressure. So, uh, yeah, we will, we, we, we know the way that we we would like to play, uh, but then we will. I think the challenge will be to adapt uh, within the game. There's probably some of the public that thought it might be a bit more of a mix and match, and, and not just Jaden sort of being the only sort of newish guy in the starting lineup. Just your just your message to them, just about the other players last week that didn't obviously make the 23 this week. Yeah, I, th I thought there's a couple of guys that st that, that that stood out, you know, and and for us it was. You know, um, you are see as a little, oh, let's say club rugby or franchise rugby. It, it you you can judge a player there the whole season, but you you need to see him a test match, and you need to see him in a test match where there's pressure. You know, it's easy. I think uh, it's unfair on a player to play him in a game that he wants to shine and he wants to perform, but but uh, there isn't there's nothing on the game. You know, so I th I thought that was. That was the reason for us going with the selection uh, last week like we did. It's not that we thought uh, uh, um, we disrespecting Wales. We, I really think that team could have beaten Wales. I mean, otherwise we wouldn't have, have selected the team. Um, and like I said, we had a couple of opportunities which we just didn't finish. And I thought the guys really played well. Um, but there's also um, a couple of guys where we, we, where we could see there's, there's still a little bit of a gap in the, in the development. And our challenge as a coaching team is now to, to close that gap, you know. Yeah. Do you think that the uh, um, global rugby the, this month so far, is it showing that um, things will be tighter than ever at the World Cup? Are the teams um, as many, more teams than before? I mean, how tight do you think it's... World rugby is progressing in terms of the differences between the teams now. Yeah, I think I think if you look at just what happened on the weekend, you know, where uh, you can be number one in the world and then uh, within a blink of an eye, you're back to number three in the world, you know. And I think uh, that that uh, I, I, that's the nice thing of of where we are currently. I think uh, um, in rugby, I think in the top ten teams. Uh, or top 10 ranking teams in the world. I think any team can beat anybody on any given day. Uh, I thought, uh, I mean, if you look at the, I don't know if you guys watched the, the, the Japan uh, versus France game. I mean, uh, if that hooker scored, it, it would have been uh, Japan beating France, you know. Uh, um, and so I, I really think it's it's that tight. If you, if you, if you get something wrong on the weekend, doesn't matter if number number one in the world is playing number ten in the world, like France is playing number ten in the world. You know, if you get if if you don't get your stuff or your house in order, you you can lose. So yeah, it's very tough. So I know Jaden needs some questions. Just quickly, uh, what's the plan with Elton? Because he, he played forty minutes in the first test, as you said, then he only had played half an hour of rugby before that. Yeah, he hasn't now featured in the next two tests. I don't know, you know. He's going to go into the rugby championship with no club rugby, as, as it appears to me. I don't know when the Japanese go back exactly. So, so how's he going to be managed in terms of the game time? Yeah, listen, that, that he probably misses out because we're going with six-two splits, uh, um, um, and and yeah, if, if we if we go five-three, we probably Elton would be in the mix, 
So, uh, but, and th that's unfortunately where we are. And that's why, why um, I thought it was so important for us to, to give him some game time, you know. And uh, with Andre only arriving on that Sunday, uh, it, it, it was the ideal opportunity for us. And he's been working with us. So, yes, he's got 40 minutes. And I think, like I mentioned there, I think the conservative uh, way of selection uh, from our coaching group would, would have probably be to go with a 5-3 split, you know. But if we did that... Um, we probably wouldn't have have seen Gaza play then. Uh, so so we 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 decided to to stick with the six two split and uh, yeah and, and and that's unfortunately just where we are. So if Polly gets injured on Saturday, hopefully not. Um, you know, then you're going to go into the rugby championship with Alvin who's undercooked. I guess that's the way it is. Yeah, I, I guess that is the way it is. Yeah. Jacques, can you just uh, uh, obviously a series to win, but just to win on Yemen. Uh, for the weekend, uh, is there a sense of occasion um, surrounding all of that and just the contribution to South Africa rugby over the years? Yeah, I think uh, both Eben's playing his 100th and Bongi is playing his 50th, you know. So I think that's big milestone, individual milestones. Uh, but I think yeah, that's, the, that's the thing. Rugby is a team sport, you know. They've, they've been given the opportunity to play in these milestone, milestone games because of good team performances in the past. Um, and uh, I think the key thing for those two gentlemen, yes, it's, it, it, it's a very proud moment and, and their families will be proud. But the, the main thing is, uh, I think if you lose your 100th test, uh, I think it haunts you for the rest of your life. And if you win it, uh, that special day will stay with, with you forever. So the key thing is, yes, it's a big game, but the main thing is to focus on, on, on what, the, what the team needs and, what they, and how they can serve the team. Um, uh, because it, it is at the end of the team sport. And both those gentlemen have been uh, warriors for South Africa. Shark, you've uh, coached Evans since he was at the Storms in 2012. What's been the biggest growth over the past 10 years, uh, physically and mentally? I think he was always a he was always a, a, a athlete, you know, um, uh, Evan. And I think, um, obviously, uh, Starting out, uh, you this young player, um, I think when he started out, he was, I don't know what his age was, he was probably 21, 22. I know he played for the Storms before he played for Western Province. Uh, and he played a test match before he played for Western Province, uh, I think. Um, so I think the thing there, I remember the young Eben, and now I see a guy that, that, that's got a lot of leadership uh, uh, attributes. He's, 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 he's led his country, he's, he was captain of the Springboks before. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, he's, he's, uh, he's, it's nice to see him becoming a man, a grown man, you know, from, from the young, uh, um, how can I say, he had, no, he had no stress and he was a kid, you know, when he started playing for us. And now he's this man, you know, with, with, uh, um, with hopefully getting a family and all that. So, yeah.